boom. Tips with Lester Pips is the show that you're currently watching. It's about to start with his amazing guests, and they're gonna tell you how to survive out in the apocalypse. This way, you won't be dead if anything was to attack humanity and try to end it. So now you gotta show up with your ears and your eyes and watch the show. It's Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips. Oh, yeah! That's the show. That's what the show is. We here. We talking about Apocalypse Tips. We doing a show that's called Apocalypse Tips. That's me. I'm the Lester Pips from the title. I didn't come in here, steal this guy's body, do a show instead of him. No, no, no. I am the real him. I am Lester Pips. Don't question it. Don't doubt it. I am who I say I am. Just like that one football team was who we thought they was. You know what I'm talking about? Any sports heads in the audience? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Yo, listen, you know, what what, what you're probably wondering is what the heck is this show? What, what the what the what the dang heck is I stumbled into? Well, I'll tell you what you stumbled into, and I, I'm very glad that you did. Uh this is a show where me, legendary, according to me, a doomsday prep lecturer, uh, who, you know, I consider myself to be the world's first and foremost doomsday prep lecturer in all the world. Uh, the world's first moment in all the world. I get together with some of my guests, who of course are people who got onto my email list because they saw me do a speech sometime somewhere, most likely at a comedy open mic. Um, because that is, of course, what I have the most access to. Back before all these COVIDs was up in the air, trying to get our brains. Uh, you know, so I, that's what I was doing. Um, and you know, I, I I would go around, I would talk to folks, and then I, and then they get on my email list, and I'd say, okay, you want to be on my show? And they say, yeah. And that's what's happening. Okay. So that makes sense. All right. Great. We got that out of the way. Now, uh, a lot of folks might be wondering, hey, can I be in the chat? And let me give you one example of somebody who is in the chat. It's that one guy, Connor something. Welcome to the show. He says, Lester, what's happening? I say, well, what's happening is we're doing a show, Connor. Welcome. Thank you for being here, man. Now, um, a little bit later, I'm going to talk to them guests who I was telling you all about. Uh, we are going to talk to... I'm so excited about this. At the end of the show, we're going to talk to everyone's favorite actor, Tony Danza. Uh, I don't know anything about that, dude. I'm so excited to learn. Uh, we're also going to talk to a rich lady. <laughs> That's my understanding anyway. Um, she said, hey, I'm rich. I'd like to be on your show. I said, I won't take cash money, but I'd love to have you on the show. Uh, her name is Lady Pemberley Butterfingers. Excited to talk to her. We was going to talk to a lord, little Lord Hooks, but little Lord Hooks' internet would not respond to his, his or her lordship. Uh, 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 so, uh, so yeah, it's like uh, their lordship. I got to get that right. You know, you call people what they want to be called. Um, uh, so that's frustrating that they couldn't get their internet to work, but you know, things happen. So before that, we're going to talk to Greg Gilmore and I am excited about that as well. Now, of course, before we get to the guests, we got to talk about 
what day it is, okay? Because every good show starts with an acknowledgement of what day it is. Now, today is January 21st, 2021, which is the day after the big inauguration uh, where all the people was like, hey, we're going to be happy now. And all the good artists was on stage and all the bad artists were like, oh, man, I'm Kid Rock. Um, so that that's good. You know, that's good. And I'm glad that that happened. And, you know, on this show, I tried not to get too political, but every week I said something awful about big old Donald Dickhead Trump. And uh, anyway, he's gone. Fuck yeah. <laughs> we got other folks in the chat. We got Florida Man Gamer here giving, giving the old Bugs Bunny claps. Thank you for doing that. I assume that was in response to me saying Trump the, is a dickhead or whatever. We got Waddles Barkley in the chat. What up, Waddles? Saying hold me closer, Tony Danza. Perfect. Because we, we're going to talk to Tony later. I imagine he's not holding folks closer right now due to all them COVIDs. But we will find out. Um, stick around for that and ask Waddles. Now, I didn't just tell you what day it is because I wanted to go on a tangent about the uh, inauguration. I do it every show because we talk about what national holidays exist on this show. <laughs> That's a thing we do now. Uh, and today is, of course, as I said, January 21st, which is National Museum Selfie Day. That's true. I never make any of these up. I don't know why that exists. I don't think it should exist. I'm upset that it exists. But of course, in Louisiana, we do have traditions surrounding it, as as we do for all the things. Um, so in New Orleans on National Museum Day, Selfie Day, everybody congregates at the Mardi Gras world to learn something new about culture. Um, Mardi Gras world is what I consider to be the greatest museum in the history of Mardi Gras. Now, uh, in Baton Rouge, I don't know what most folks, most folks do. Um, but for me, I would always spend the day inside the LSU football Tiger trophy case, just hanging out in, them there, in there with them trophies. Um, and then, of course, across the rest of the state, other folks have different traditions. Um, but everybody is legally required to tell one story about their favorite French person in front of the city or town's biggest statue of Gilbert de Montier, of course, otherwise known as the Marquis de Lafayette. Now, uh, it has been pointed out that that dude's not always been a good dude. And sometimes he was a bad dude, but in Louisiana, we still love him. Uh, now, we're going to talk about uh, 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 apocalypses on this show, okay? And a lot of folks ask me questions about, what's an apocalypse I got to worry about? Well, don't worry, I got them all covered, okay? This week, I got a, a, a question from my friend uh, at Freddie Mercury Automobiles. Freddie Mercury Automobiles wants to know, how likely is it that the Decepticons are real and could, could destroy us with the AllSpark? Okay. And this is a great question because some fictional apocalypses could be true and some couldn't. Yeah, everybody knows that. Some could be true. Some could not be. This one, of course, could be true. So we got to watch out for Decepticons. If you see any jets flying low and screaming like 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 they really annoying, obnoxious caricatures, um, that's probably jet stream. So watch out. So what I always do is I listen to every jet that I see so I can make sure it's not jet stream. Oh, Starscream? What was his name? Starscream was his name. Yeah. Jetstream is what's actually behind a jet. That's one thing. Uh, uh, another another question I got was from Beef420. Beef420 wants to know Biden? Question mark? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Biden, you know, yeah. Tokyo Driftwood wants to know, you ever consider living underwater? Great question, Tokyo Dif Driftwood. Um, I have not personally considered living underwater because I am scared of sharks. But, you know, we talked a long time about that, that TV show with the sharks with the legs. That's one of my biggest fear apocalypses is that those turn out to be real and they try to take over. So I wouldn't live underwater if I didn't have to. But if I had to, I bet it w I could make it work. All right. Those are all good things for you to know. Uh, if you have any questions for me, send them to me. I'll ask them. That's how it works. You know, I just, you got to give me the question. If you want to know something about the apocalypse, like, uh, like, uh, like B420 did, well, I'll, I'll find out. I guess his question wasn't apocalypse related, huh? He just said Biden. Anyway, we got to get to the guests on the show. I've been doing too much talking already. So let me do that. My first guest, I'm so excited to talk to them. Uh, uh, their name is Greg Gilmore. And uh, here they are. Greg, welcome to the show. Let's do Greg. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 good to see you. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, do you think that there's music playing? There's no music playing. The only music. Oh, okay. Playing. You were doing a pose like something was supposed to be happening. And I was like, I don't know if Greg knows that there's no music playing. No, there's no music, Lester. It's just me. It's just me. It's great. So. Well, great. I'm so excited to have you on the show. You know, you wrote to me. You said you wanted to be on the show. Talk about how you're getting through these apocalypses. 
Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's so many COVID seven years. Like, so how you doing? Lester, I'm Gucci. I'm flossing. I'm mossing. I'm fizzing. I'm fizzing. And I just moved to Frisco. Okay. All right. That's cool. I don't know any. You mean San Francisco or is there a place called Frisco for real? I'm talking about Frisco. I'm talking about the Bay. I'm talking about the Yay area. I'm talking about San Fran. I'm talking about the Windy City. I'm talking about wear some flowers in your hair or maybe a hat of your favorite locally sourced single origin Cortado. Frisco. <laughs> No, okay. I mean, I I hear you, but I'm still not like I'm just not crystal clear. Are you talking about San Francisco, the city, or are you talking about a place called Frisco that also has all those nicknames? I'm talking about San Francisco, my home, my oh, sister, you are. Okay. my lover, my blood. What I is that a tattoo? I can't see. Yeah. Oh wow, you got the bridge tattooed on your arm. I sure did. In fact, I did it myself along with my beautiful wife, Vanessa. Okay. And if it looks a little incomplete right now, it's because I'm saving up to get a whole golden glade sleeve. Whoa, that's yeah. hey, that's a cool idea. That's a that's a tattoo I haven't seen before. Uh <laughs> you don't often see an entire bridge on somebody's arm, I'll tell you that. But oh. uh but Greg, I'm curious. All over my body, all over. Oh, Even you got bridges face. all over? I want to get a Golden Gate Bridge tattoo all over my body. Celebrate Whoa. Frisco. You know, if you hold your arms out, like, you could kind of be the shape of the bridge with, like, the peak. Uh, it's hard on this window because my arms get cut off, but, like, the peak of the bridge is your head, and then the your arms make the other peaks. That's hella cutty. That is hella cutty. Oh, I don't know about that. that. That's so wet. That's cutty. That is so wet. I can't. I can't. Well, you know what that's ideally what not, because the bridge, when it gets wet, is real dangerous to drive on. Ugh. What it sounds like, Lester, is that you, not unlike myself, Greg, are a disruptor. And I like that about you. You do well out in Frisco. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate that. You know, I like to know that I would do well in a place. I did notice that every time you said your name so far, you have done that wink. Is that actually part of your name? Is that part of your legal name? It actually is, because uh, you can't say Greg without a little smile. <laughs> I guess legally you're not allowed to now. That's crazy. It's well, totally, uh, it's illegal. Well, well Greg, I, I, you know, I, I'm so thrilled that you moved to Frisco. What what prompted the move? Did you get a new job? Oh, oh my gosh. Well, uh, something you should know about me, Lester. Okay, I just became a mister. All right. My beautiful. Whoa, wife. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. My beautiful wife, Vanessa, and I just decided to say, fuck it. Get out of town. Move to Frisco. Okay. Usually we winter in Colorado, but we decided to buy a nice 500 square uh, plot of land in a uh, high Asbury for five Dude. big months. Greg, looking at you, I was thinking, okay, that's like, maybe like a, a guy who works as like a DJ's assistant or something. But now I'm hearing that you spending a ton of money on uh, on land and like summer in Colorado. Greg Gilmore, is you rich? I mean, I'm rich in my heart because I have love. I have two rescue labs. Their names are Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Madam Vice President. Uh, we just got one yesterday. You just got that one? As a result wow. of the, of the You just got that one today? The day after the inauguration? Uh, yesterday, uh, during the inauguration. I oh, mean, that's a great way to spend your inauguration. You inaugurate yeah. a new doggy into your life. I'm a feminist, so we had to go with Madam VP. Uh, but if, since you asked, oh, like, yes, nice. I am a disruptor. Okay, I worked for the big three. Uh, those are uh, T, S, F, and F, B. Yes, tech. Yes, Twitter, Salesforce. Okay, let me just give myself up. Whoa. Facebook, okay, but I'm one of the good guys. Uh, and my friends <laughs> and I we're trying to disrupt the VC world right now. Oh, yeah, uh, I'm trying, to get it. Try and make it in the wearable tech field. Okay. Oh dang. So all that tech, all that stuff that you're wearing is wearable tech? Absolutely. Uh we call this uh the ear pod. 
uh, 2.0, okay? You just give him a little tug. Starts playing your favorite E40 tunes because he's- Oh, there. I see. Okay, it looks like just like a long <laughs> earring that like maybe like a fancy lady would wear. Now, see, it's fashion, but it's wearable tech, all right? I've also got right here, okay? This is the Gilmore 5.0. It's the latest in smartphone technology. So smart doesn't even have a screen. Whoa. Hello. Hello. Yes, it's Greg. Two questions. How do you ever use it? And also, what makes it wearable? You just need to breathe on it. It tells you everything you need to know about breath. Oh, I'm, just, I'm getting so emotional. Ugh. But real men cry. Bless the real men cry. Hey, uh, yes, you know when a situation warrants a tear, you drop that tear. You know what I'm saying? You you let you let a little bit of water fall out your eye if you need to. I, I hear you. Absolutely. Uh, you might notice I'm also wearing headphones around my neck. Okay. I did notice that. Yeah. This guy is into wearable tech, but at the end of the day, it's all about analog recordings. All right. So we listen to CDs in Vanessa's in my five million dollar height as very uh. Jesus. Like a little bunker of our own. That's so much uh, money. We we uh we only play CDs though, because it's for the whole experience. Okay, none of these, none of these playlists, all right, none of this like Spotify, okay. Sure. If I were an artist, I wouldn't make an album just so you could pick track seven, okay? I want you to hear all of track Greg. Wait, I'm sorry. If you were an artist. You would make an album just so you could pick track seven? No, I think you misunderstood me, and that's okay. All right, because I'm all about the communication here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't just make an album so you picked one track. I'd want you to hear my whole story, top to bottom. Oh, okay, okay. That's You're not trying to make just like one banger. You're trying that's to make like uh, a a series, uh, an album that's like commercially successful on every single song. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's why my beautiful wife, Vanessa, Smart. and I, we only listen to CDs in this house. Uh, and we and we keep <laughs> our, uh, our headphones around our neck at the same time. Now, okay, so I want to say something like musician. Got it. to all the viewers out there. Um, I just want you to know you can, I'm here to listen, okay? I said I was a feminist, but you can ask me anything about Frisco because I hook it up. All right. Oh, well, that's great. I'm so glad you said so because we do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, yeah. Babyface Hooks wants to know, this isn't about uh, San Francisco, but uh, this is about some of the stuff we talked about earlier. If you had to live underwater, what would be the best snacks to pack? Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, well yeah. I'd love okay. for you to take this first because everybody knows what I'm going to say. Yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, something we Friskins are known for, we're real snobs about our Mexican food. Okay, so miss me with that queso, that Tex-Mex, and uh, hook me up with a burrito. You're right there on the show if you want. Preferably, uh, I'm trying to clean up my mouth, you know, because okay. yeah. my two girls, uh, the, the dogs, they're sitting off in the corner over there, and I want their father to lead by example. So, did, did you say the dogs? Dogs. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, I would say you got to go down to the wharf. All right. Pier 39. Get mm -hmm. yourself a huge burrito uh, and then dive right into the bay. Swim on out to Alcatraz <laughs> and uh, get yourself a little locally sourced gem like this necklace I got from the Alcatraz flea market. Even flow. Oh, I'm going to zoom in on that. Water. Show us that necklace. Yeah. What, what were you saying about it from the Al Alcatraz? Alcatraz is one of Frisco's most little known attractions, uh, just located oh. to the left of the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, by the way, what I'm saying is burrito. Swim, take that burrito, wrap it up <laughs> in oil, swim across the bay, and then get yourself over to Alcatraz uh, for some. Uh, this isn't wearable tech, but it sure is pretty. Uh, okay, so it's not wearable. So okay, so far nothing that you've shown me has actually been wearable tech. I gotta say, because because yeah. the earring, like you said, you pull on it and it changes how the song sounds, but that's that's just your ear moving. And then the headphones you said are not wearable tech, and then the necklace you said is not wearable tech. Well, the headphone the headphones are wearable tech. Is that you? They're just not. They're not wireless tech. All right. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, yeah. They're just headphones, though. They're not like wearable tech is like a technical T-shirt. You know. Like a T-shirt yeah. that also can like 
tell you how your your stocks are doing or something. Well, speaking I'm of to relate to you, I don't have stocks. Speaking of wearable T-shirts, uh, I just want you to know if you're into local bands, you should check out this wearable T-shirt that I'm wearing right here. It's this little known band. I also got this at the Bomb Flea Market on Treasure Island, which is another local Frisco joint. After you've gone and checked out the houses on this uh, little known television show called uh, Full House, uh, I think it was big in the 90s or something, get yourself yeah. over to the Bomb Ass Flea Market on 39th Street and the Wharf. It's, it's part of Treasure Island. Uh, and and check out they've got a great selection of local band tees. This one, I, Sublime. If you ever heard of them, they're gonna blow up. Let me yeah. tell you. No, yeah. I, I gotta say, it seems like you know, uh, just for anybody listening, um, uh, uh Greg is is wearing a Sublime T-shirt, and the the necklace is very much just your generic run of the mill uh tourist trap necklace you would buy at Alcatraz. Excuse me, Alcatraz. Um, so it does seem like uh, uh, you know, maybe you're not as sure about what a flea market is as some other folks might be. Well, I'll tell what's you. Your what, what's your favorite flea market you've ever been to? Is it Mall of America? Um, I mean, that would be up there, but I'll okay. probably have to. It was one that I found um, while journeying deep into the Amazon. Um, oh. Back around 1998, uh, right before the dot com boom, bubble burst, real estate, housing. You know, wow. uh, Wall Street I, money never sleeps. That whole thing. Sure, like um, internet. Yeah. You anything you can get anything at the Amazon. You can get books. You can get oh. uh, you can get avocados delivered from Whole Foods. Oh, uh, you can get uh, Rattle and Hum by U two on CD. Yes, yeah, you can. That's true, <laughs> Greg. I gotta tell you, you if you're talking about the Amazon website, not the Amazon rainforest right now, you, you're not talking about a flea market. I'm telling you, man, anything you want from Amazon, I'll hook it up. They even have one in Frisco. It's off of well, thank you so much for that. You're 39 in the wharf, right across from Alcatraz. So you can just dive right into the bay <laughs> and swim across and pretend that you're floating through the Amazon down wow. under. That sounds awesome and completely detached from reality at the same time. Now, um, Florida Man Gamer wants to know, uh, what's the one place, fictional or non-fictional, that's better than San Francisco? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I didn't address uh, Babyface Hook's question earlier. Um, my answer to if you had to live underwater, what would be the best snacks to pack would be um, the 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 Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen spicy chicken strips, of course. Wow. Uh, I mean, duh. All right, Florida Man Gamer wants to know, what's the one place, fictional or non-fictional, that is better than San Francisco? Uh Hang on one sec. I'm, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, this is the latest iPhone. You can't get it. It's called the iPhone book. You can okay, that's just a big it. book. It's a flip phone. Uh-huh. So, it's a big, big you book. Can, you can pick whichever novel you'd like to listen to while you're taking your calls. So this Does one, it have to be the one that that book is? No, but this one's Pride and Prejudice, and I got it with Gold Bound Leaf. So I can hear hello in the meantime and Mr. Dorsey on the rest of the time. But I'm going to tell him to hold because... Okay, thank you for answering your book. Uh, Greg, I'm getting the impression that you might not have any attachment to reality. But um, uh, uh, but to answer your question, uh, favorite city, uh, real or imagined, uh, definitely Denver, Colorado, uh, <laughs> the local source sourdough, uh, and University of Denver. Sorry, you, you moved to San Francisco, and the place that would be better than that would be Denver for the sourdough? For the sourdough, Vanessa. Man, that's a swipe at San Francisco, your new town, because their whole thing is that all they do is be sour about dough. Oh, that's really funny. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming out in Haight Asbury sometime. Yeah, you know, I, I haven't made it out there, but maybe I will. Uh, uh, to answer Florida Man Gamer's question, one place fiction, non fictional, better than San Francisco. Well, first of all, for, for non fictional, I will say this very bunker that I'm in. Obviously, behind me, there's a picture of something else, but in here, there's a fully functioning Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen franchise location. So, where else would you need to go? Um, but let me also cover fictional. Um, the best fictional place, um, <laughs> hmm, hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, uh, well, now I've never seen a movie, so it's really hard for me to do this. Sometimes it's tricky when you have like an extensive canon that limits the things you're allowed to think of. Um, I'm going to go with the Death Star after it explodes because that's victory, baby. Um, now, well, Greg, 
we do have to move on to my oh wait grendelson's here grendelson says what up pack people i say what up grendel man grendel man okay um <clears throat> excuse me talking too fast start making me cough uh, talking too fast, start, make me cough. <laughs> I don't understand what my accent is becoming. Now, uh, we are going to move on to our next guest here. But before we do, I have a question coming to me from a user on Instagram called uh, at Miss Elizabeth Content, who, yeah, I'm looking at her picture on uh, Instagram. And then I'm looking at you and I'm thinking like, hmm, Miss Elizabeth Content could be like, if instead of dressing up like somebody who doesn't understand what humanity is, um, <laughs> which I, is what I think of people who wear sublime shirts, I guess. Uh, if instead of doing that, you was just like wearing a normal human's clothes, uh, they would look kind of like you. Um, well, I'll take that as a compliment. But ever since uh, my beautiful wife, Vanessa, and I uh, got married and moved to Hyde Asbury, uh, me no looky at uh, the ladies anymore, Lester. I'm a kept man. The only girls in my life are Vanessa, RBG, and MVP. Hmm. Well, okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> um, uh, that, you caught me off guard with that answer. That's a good answer. Um, but to answer this question uh, from Atmos Elizabeth Content, uh, 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 she wants to know what's your favorite type of open face sandwich? That's a good question. Um, for me, that would be if you take a sandwich and then instead of eating a sandwich, you um, need Popeye's Louisiana and Kitchen Rice Chicken Strips. Duh! That would be uh, good on a sandwich. Greg, it, it would be good on a sandwich. You're right. Greg, what, what do you think? What are your favorite type of open face? Oh, my God. Uh, my favorite type of uh, open face sandwich, if I had to say, it would be uh, the garbanzo beans. That. <laughs> Sorry. Uh -huh. Delicious. I can't I'm emotional about this garbanzo bean sandwich. Garbanzo beans and the cucumbers that my beautiful wife Vanessa and I grow locally sourced from our backyard uh, with a little bit of hummus on a, a, a sourdough uh, Denver, Colorado pita sprinkled um, <laughs> with a wildflower or two and some hope. Wow, that famous Denver, Colorado sourdough pita. Uh, well, you know, if you like it, I'm sure it's at least pretty good. Uh, uh, someday, maybe I'll find out. But before we get to that day, we do have to get to our next guest, who I'm very excited to introduce to the show right now. Um, their name is Lady Pemberton, excuse me, Lady Pemberley Butterfingers. Uh, Lady Pemberley Butterfingers, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, it's a yeah. pleasure. Hello. And how are you? Oh, you know, well, I'm doing I'm doing quite all right, I would say. On a scale from oh. seven to eleven, I'm gonna put it right around uh ten point five. Wow, that's a good yeah, Greg, if you don't mind, I'm gonna actually hit mute on you for just a second. Um and then uh yeah. Okay, sorry, uh Lady Pemberley. Yeah, I <laughs> Scale from seven to eleven, I'll, I'll go ten point five. Good, good, good number. It's, very, it's a very good number, Lester. And I have to say, it's absolutely top notch here. You know, I'm I'm delighted to be invited. You know, I don't I don't get invited a lot of places. Oh well, yeah. I mean, you were on my email list. Uh, I, I I reached out to my email list all the time to say, hey, uh, which of y'all wants to come on the show? Talk about how you're doing in the apocalypse. Any tips you might have? Anything you want to talk about? We talk about it. And I was so glad to get your email back. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, you know, I do have one complaint about the apocalypse. You know, Just the me? ongoing problem. I am a very wealthy lady, as you can tell from my excessive jewelry, and. People keep sneaking onto my mansion and spray painting horrible things all over my walls. I don't know what's Oh my God. Doing. I know, I'm terrified of it. People keep saying, eat the rich. Ah, that's ridiculous. I have, it tastes terrible. Yeah, and I mean, come on, we just went through this whole thing with Army Hammer. Everybody knows cannibalism's not cool. It's not cool. Although I did not, I don't feel like I ever fully got to the bottom of that story, personally. Could you clue oh. me in, perhaps? Sure, uh, Greg. I'm gonna. Uh, I don't know if you know about all this. Uh, uh, if I'm, do you still hear a little bit of an echo, folks? No. Okay, great. Uh, Greg, I, I mean, have you been following the the Army Hammer story at all, Greg? Well, oh. you know, sometimes my butler puts me online, and Greg, I've seen you there. What do you think? 
First yeah, you've been sitting thing. online, Greg. Yes. I have been sitting online, you know, it, as a disruptor, it's important to keep your finger on the pulse of all that is holy, AKA the mm -hmm. internet and the market. Uh, but I would like to say, yes, unfortunately, I have kept tabs on the Army Hammer situation because he is also a disruptor. A disruptor, toes. Wow. Okay, well, let me fill you in then. It seems like Greg has kept up on it but doesn't actually know, uh, which no, tracks for Greg. Uh, I don't I didn't mean to mansplain, but uh I'm I'm pretty up on I'm pretty up on the Army Hammer stitch. Uh he has had a series of DMs linked from Instagram, which certainly wouldn't have happened on the iPhone book, all right? Uh, first, well, yeah, it couldn't have happened on the book. Uh, secondly, uh, he has displayed some, uh, shall we say, cannibalistic uh, tendencies uh, oh. towards towards women, uh, as well as some uh, messages of sexual nature, which I will not talk about now out of respect to my oh. wife, Vanessa. Um, but one of them included, uh, sawing off a lady's toe and sticking it in his pocket. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's weird. too much. Weird oh, stuff. God. Although uh, someone did, did, did tell me that the, like the woman who accused him of this came out and was like, nah, that's not true. But I don't know what's true anymore. You know, um, you know? for me, once it's said, it's going to continually impact my opinion of the person until someone proves it otherwise. Indeed, indeed. And I think, you know, as a high society lady, I think that's the right way to go. You know, whatever anyone says about anything at any time is what you should believe in that moment. Exactly. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you, though, that reminds me a lot of my ex-husband, my well, my first ex-husband who died tragically. Very sad. He was always into that kind of stuff, you know. Oh, Pemberley, I'm going to eat your face. You know, really? Yes. Oh, yes. He died tragically, and we don't need to go into how. But you know, he was quite a strange one. He always used to say, "Pem, you married me for my money," and I said, "Yes." And <laughs> I'm an improviser. Yeah, wonderful improv skills there. You, you did you add anything to the conversation? No, I'm a woman, so I don't. I just kind of look off. Oh, okay. I've known women who don't do that, but if that's what you do, that's what you do. Now, uh, mm -hmm. I I will say, um, I remember hearing about the 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 Butterfinger fortune getting taken by uh by some lady who wasn't even born a Butterfinger. And I, I mean, is that you? Yes. Well, you know, I have uh, I wasn't born into this. You see, it is uh. It was taken. But you know, uh, the thing about being a star is that no one ever leaves a star. That's why you're a star. And, and so when he died in a way, he didn't leave me because he left me all of his money. That's true. I just, I distinctly remember hearing about there being some, some kind of unfortunate circumstances where a, a man um, turned up uh, with yeah. most of his face eat off, like yeah. most of his face was eaten off. And and people were like, "Wow, it's he came off in flakes just like his candy bars." And then it was the Butterfinger guy. Yes, yes, that joke was going around for quite some time. I found it a bit dis distasteful, you know. But the detective yeah. that was on the case, um, he and I had a little agreement. And uh, oh. what can we say? You they to work together on the case. Yes, they closed the case, and uh, and now my new husband, who has also just recently died tragically, you know, I am once again faced with another detective who thinks that I've done something wrong. Can you believe that? Outrageous. Yeah, I well, you know, I'm starting to think that I can believe that because it's like uh, the first time, like your husband got some of his face eat off, then he was missing, and then I remember reading because I, I remember reading about the the new. Butterfinger Fortune owner, which I guess would probably be you. Um, yeah, I own I own the Butterfinger Fortune. I also own <laughs> several yachts, a line of airplanes, and a Zeppelin, which I hope you don't mind I parked in the front lawn. Oh, uh, I don't mind at all. You, of course, are where you are, and I'm down here in my bunker. So I, I hope that you're, whoever takes care of your lawn, I imagine somebody does, doesn't oh. mind there being a Zeppelin on there. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, you don't know this, Lester, but we actually live quite close to each other. I had some people find your bunker, and and it's a, uh, oh. yes, it's a pretty nice bunker. What did you pay for that? Thank you. You know, I actually dug it myself, uh, oh. uh, much like that, um, 
you know that old like children's story where there's like a steam shovel that won't quit or something? Just like that, I dug a hole. Uh, I want to call him Howard the Steam Shovel or something. I don't know. Somebody will know. Um, but uh, what's a steam shovel? Oh, it's this crazy contraption from back in the day that was a shovel that ran on steam. So like you oh. put steam in there, and then all of a sudden you'd have a hole dug. Wow. Well, I don't know about that, but I will say that uh, Lester, you're looking well, and Greg, you too are looking well, and it's just a delight to be here taking a break. I, so much, Beverly. I, I do have to just not to not to get back to the crime at hand, but um, to get back to the crime at hand, uh, did you actually eat the face off both your husbands? <laughs> I don't. Uh, that is an outrageous claim to make against a, an innocent young lady who has done absolutely nothing wrong to incur this billions of dollars. But I have to say, if I if I were to consider that as an option in my life, I'd say I'd pair it with a lovely salad, you know, almost like a salmon, perhaps on a bagel. What did you ask me? I'm sorry. I got a little carried away there. <laughs> you you did well. I'm just I'm remembering now that I'm thinking about it. The story I was reading about the second death in the Butterfinger family. You mm -hmm. did you remarry to the the uh, to like uh, to brother. Jonathan's baby Ruth, right? Yes, yes, I did. Um, he and I met at a yoga class um, in Dalai Lama's. Uh, cyber, uh, he has a separate little island. You know, I don't know if you if you knew about that. That's a secret. Oops. I didn't know about that. I, I've been having a lot of folks come on here tell me about secret islands lately. I, I wish I was a secret island kind of rich. That'd be cool. Well, you know, it's a it's a it's a lovely thing to have, but um, you know, sometimes you find yourself there with your husband and you find yourself a little bit bored and you start to, your eyes start to go a little bit red and and then you black out for a while. So yes, sometimes islands aren't the best place to go. Yeah, it seems like anywhere with you by yourself might be risky to go. Uh, Greg, I imagine you know you you a rich person. You you got an island. Uh, I mean, I'm not one to get an island and tell. Uh, just as it sounds <laughs> like Lady Pemberley Butterfinger isn't one to uh, kiss or rip off someone's open faced uh, face. Uh, but if we're talking islands. Uh, no, I don't own one myself, but a really great island to check out in Frisco is uh, uh, Alcatraz. Oh, yes. You pronounce no. that like a Jewish person. Alcatraz. <laughs> Al 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 Alcatraz. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I once met a Jew. What did you say? I said I once met a Jew. Oh, only once? You've only once only met a Jew? Once. Well, you know, I'm a I'm a waspy lady, and I spend a lot of time in the country club. I didn't want to assume, but based on everything you've ever said, I figured that was probably true. Oh, I was, yeah. was going to say, it sounds like uh, Lady Pemberley, you should check out Haight-Asbury if you're looking to put down roots somewhere. It's a really mm -hmm. great, sustainable, uh, friendly neighborhood. Um, and if you were thinking about, I don't know, investing, long-term, IRA, 401k, la, mm -hmm. la, la. Uh, my beautiful wife, uh, Vanessa, and I, uh, beautiful, not unlike yourself, uh, we're thinking about buying some property up in Montecito. Wow, that's amazing. That's you know, I, would, I would love to consider investing in your obviously wonderful business, but my funds are currently um, being withheld from me by the FBI, and so I'm just... Oh. You know, I'm in a little bit of a bind there, but I think, you know, tally-ho and tip-top, you seem to know what you're doing. Uh, well, I mean, we do Bitcoin if that's... Yeah. Oh, I don't know too much about that. It's um, fine. Hmm. Apple Pay works too. Okay. You know, uh, not to completely divert the conversation from whether or not y'all is going to get into a business relationship, but I, I do have another question coming to me from the chat, which is, uh, uh, Grendelson once says, um, I'm thinking that maybe Lady Pemberley might want to be the second Mrs. Grendelson. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm you don't know Grendelson at all, Lady Pemberley, but um, are you looking for yeah. a new husband now that you've killed and eaten the faces of two of them? Well, I'm always looking for a new husband, of course. You know, this is what I tell all the wealthy men they say, Lady Pem, you're using me for your money. And I said, You know what? I am. But would you rather die alone on your stacks of money, or would you have a ridiculous human being come in and spend it all for you? And they say, 
the second one. It's facts. I mean, there's some logic there. There is, you know. It sounds like, uh, you know, the downside, of course, is getting killed, having your face eaten, and losing all your money. Um, yeah, and also the friends of these men are always, you know, they're so rude to me at their weddings and at their funerals. It's It's such a bag. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But, yeah. you know, I do think, you know, considering that you are the one who murdered their friend, there's some, well, allegedly. There's some justification there. Well, we, well, as I as I told you before, you know, the detective on the case was, um, we came to a little bit of agreement and uh, no <laughs> charges were uh, pushed against me. Right, right. You got away scot-free, which, you know, that's yeah. one of the things about this show. Just like you have that agreement with the detective, I have an agreement with uh, every law enforcement agency that anything said on this show is not permissible in court. So you're, you're free mm -hmm. to talk about it, you know? Oh, wow. You know, Lester, I think you and I are going to be great friends. Uh oh, <laughs> I don't want to get my face eat. But you know, Lady Pemberley, I'm excited to to know a little bit more about you. Hopefully, you know, if it is true that your name should be cleared, maybe someday we'll figure out how to clear your name. But it sounds like it's not. Oh, I, it will be. Yes, I will certainly <laughs> put down enough money to make sure that yes, it is. <laughs> well, I don't have any uh, uh, PI training, but I would uh, consider figuring that out. That could be a fun uh, 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 side activity for me while I'm down here in the bunker doing a little PI work. But, you know, we do have to get to our next guest, who is somebody who I think has done PI work on TV. Um, but before we get to him, we do have a question. Come to me through uh, my publicist at Ezra Party on Instagram for from at uh lex.wiz.42 who Ooh. yeah looking at them on instagram it's like kind of like if instead of being this rich cannibal that we made you be uh you was uh you you was just like a regular human being oh wow that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous i i completely agree now uh uh lex Wiz wants to know uh, what is your favorite color? Oh, you know, that's such a nice question. I don't really get, uh, I haven't gotten asked that question on the show before, but I will say, you know, obviously number one most important thing to me is a Papa's Louisiana kitchen, spicy chicken strips. So I'm going to have to go with the exact color of the outside of a Papa's Louisiana kitchen, spicy chicken strip. I call it red number New Orleans. Um, uh, <laughs> uh huh. That's what I call it. Um, uh, Greg, let's go to you next. Do you have any, uh, do you have a favorite color? Uh, I sure do, Lester. Uh, my favorite color uh, is called Carl, and that's what we Friskins call the name of the fog that rolls in over the bay. Huh, I've never heard that before, but okay, that sounds like a color. Uh, uh, and of course, Lady Pem Pemberley, um, I'm guessing your favorite color is blood red, but you know, you tell me. Oh no, that would, you would think though, because it's a warm, passionate color like me. Oh, but actually, yeah. My favorite color is green because of money. Oh, that, <laughs> hey, that you are nothing if not, sure. you, you, you are nothing if not completely transparent. That's that's great. Um, Thank you. Uh, I now, lost a lot of weight. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Now, we do have to get to my next guest, who is an actor who, uh, like I said, may have played a PI in the past. We can find that out in so many more questions. Um, Tony Danza is here. Tony, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, Tony Danes? Hey, how you doing, Lester? Nice to be here. Uh, love Greg. Oh my God, a disrupt I've never. Met. And congratulations to you and your wife, uh, the very beautiful uh, Vanessa. And condolences to Lady PB. I'm very sorry uh, about all of your husbands. Really, um, it's such a shame. But glad to be here. How you doing, Lester? Yeah, doing doing pretty good, Tony. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I haven't seen you on TV too much. I'm so curious to know what you've been been getting up to. Have you have you been uh, have you been uh, making stuff during the quarantine like so many uh, 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 actors are? Uh, you know what, Lester? It's funny you ask. I, I I'm excited to premiere this uh, on it on your show. I I didn't tell you this beforehand, but uh, oh, I have a special collaboration with Walgreens. Ooh. And we are, uh, <clears throat> you know, we are trying to promote it because a lot of us have been sitting down a lot. And uh, sometimes downstairs, the plumbing backs up. You know what I'm saying? So pro uh, exclusive Lester Pips Apocalypse Tips premiere. I'm presenting a collaboration for <clears throat> Hemorrhoids Suppositories. 
Walk okay. Me. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for the listener, there's a, a, a there's a very nicely branded box of Tony Danza brand suppository. Wow. Uh, uh, Tony, I you know I, this is a problem that affects millions of Americans. So it is really honorable that you you getting yourself into the field. You know, a lot of actors will go out and be like, "I'm going to cure malaria." Bill Gates, classic actor, trying to cure malaria. Uh, uh, and you're thinking to yourself, like, "Okay, maybe shoot your sights at something you can do." Um, although Bill Gates, you know, he can do that. So, anyway. well, this is something I can do. This is something exactly. I can do. I care a lot about it. I'm afflicted myself. I'm afflicted myself. So I care a lot oh. about him. Right? I'm I'm sorry to hear that. So, wow. You know, I'm always curious what drives people to do the good that they do in the world. Um, but it sounds like for you, it's just a little bit bad bum. That's a bad bum. That's right. No Louisiana Popeye's chicken for me, unfortunately. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm so sorry. Now, Tony, I mean, uh, uh, folks know you from, from being on the TV and the movies. What's, is there a role that you think uh, 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 stands out to you as your personal favorite? Oh, uh, uh, Howard Doe for him, yes. Oh, sorry, what was that, Lady P? I would, I would classify a great role for Tony Danza, Sourdough. I love oh, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. I love uh, so uh, from Denver or something. Yeah, that's a good kind of role. But I'm talking about uh, you, you, you know, like uh, uh, any good jobs you had. I'll tell you what, to uh, you know, as a, a Tony Danza, everyone knows me as Tony. I've kind of set the bar for Tonys on television. So I've had about 17, 18 roles where I played a guy named Tony. Uh, mm -hmm. Taxi, taxi. Taxi is one of my big breaks. Let me tell you, I was with Alan Alda. I was with the uh, not Alan uh, Judd Judd Hirsch. I was with the great Andy Kaufman. Rest in peace. Um, I played a guy, a character named Tony, and uh, mm -hmm. was loosely based on my life. But after that, I played you know, Tony and Who's the Boss? Uh, that ran for a little while in the eighties. You know, sure. uh, yeah, I don't know if you remember Jonathan, Angela, Samantha, Mona. That was one of my big things, I would say, nearly every episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I got to say, it's all the Tony roles, all the Tony roles, I got to say, my favorite Tony role was uh, the Tony Danza show. That was probably oh, my sure. favorite Tony. Absolutely. You know, and there's a famous, there's a big time Tony in the news right now. You ever think uh, maybe playing uh, Mr. Tony Fauci? Oh, oh, Tony Fauci, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like what he does. I like, you know, with the WHO. Uh, he's a, I don't know if he's a disruptor or not, but, uh, he's, he's pretty good in my eyes. I would, I would be on it. I would be on it. But like Tony Fox, you know what? It's funny thing. Um, <clears throat> we're sitting on, sitting on, on our, our cans all the time. We're uh -huh. hardly going outside. We're always on the phone at home. You know, we're spending so much time online. So since you're spending so much time online, you might as well make yourself a custom DIY website. Turn your great idea to reality with Squarespace. So oh. go to the coupon code and enter Tony Danza Crew 2021 backslash. Wow, wow, Tony. I, I, you know, we aren't sponsored by by anybody here on Apocalypse Tips. We take no money from anybody unless they want to give it to us. But uh, oh, yeah. But, so, that that just sad. seemed like a natural thing to say. Uh, I was talking about some things I'm doing, and you know. Sure. Yeah. No. I mean, hey, you you're welcome. I mean, I want my listeners to get that. Uh, Greg, you have a question? I I do. I have a cue uh, for Tony D. <laughs> you don't have oh, to raise yeah, your hand. Sure. Oh, you Yeah. All right. Um. So, Mr. Danza, uh, I was just call me Tony. Call me Tony. Tony. I was just I was curious. Um, has your suppository company, have you done an IPO? Have you gone public? Uh, if so, uh, what would the stock price be? And would you be interested in a potential merger with a VC disruptor? Yes? You yeah. know, I'm very impressed with all of your, uh, your, your wearable tech and all of your great tips on uh, the Bay. Love the Bay. You know, I, I got to say, I know, man. I'm interested. I'm interested. That's all I could say. This was a collab with Walgreens, but you know what? The ink is still wet, if you catch what I'm saying. I the love wet, still wet things. On the contract. Maybe I could back out. We could do something else. I love else. wet things. I love a merger. I love doing business. You know what? Let's go grab some surf and turf down at Pier 39. Let's talk tech. And you know what? I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship, my friend. 
I like the way you speak, but I'm going to have to hold on the turf if you catch my drift. It, going out, it isn't so good. You know what I'm saying? So sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to disrespect. I can bring you some garbanzo beans from my, my garden. Also today. very explosive down uh, there. Don't want to yeah. stay away uh, from that. That was so cutty of me. I completely forgot. Uh, well, how, about some, how about some sourdough? Bring this whole beautiful circle. You know what? We'll go with sourdough. Oh. Wow. Well, I'm so glad that we arranged that deal. I mean, uh, that's really exciting. Now, um, Tony, if you don't mind me asking, um, how's COVID treated your personal life? How you doing? Are you are you hanging out alone right now? You know what? <clears throat> Much like uh, Lady PB, uh, everybody, everyone has seemed to has taken a hike. They they didn't they forgot who's the boss is what I'm saying. Oh, I'm the boss yeah. of me now. I'm just the boss of me. That's all I got. I'm here. I'm here alone <clears throat> in my studio wow, apartment. Somebody, so you're saying you're sitting on a pile of TV money just all by yourself? Tony was was sitting on a pile of TV money. It's all gone. <gasps> never mind. Hey, hey. never mind indeed. Never mind. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking at a school here, but um, you know, maybe sitting on a whole pile of green. Ain't too good for the old uh, keister over there. As I understand, you have a few roids. Uh, <laughs> it's been yeah. a very bumpy ride. I will say that much. Yeah. It's been a very bumpy yeah. ride. Sounds frictional. You know, Tony, yeah. you're, if you're looking for a place to put your money, uh, I certainly could help you with that for sure, you know. Uh, did you say that uh, all of it was gone or maybe just a, a, a small percentage was missing? Well, a lot of it I <clears throat> invested, you know. You know, nutrition's important to me. So I put it all, a lot of it, into uh, <clears throat> a global nutrition and weight management company. The products are mm. sold exclusively by 2.3 million independent distributors across the globe. Wow. Be sure to check out <clears throat> the product catalog and enter coupon code <clears throat> Tony Danza, crew2021, backsplash. And of course, we're talking about herbalife.com. Nutrition. Okay. We're doing another plug, tonight. Tony Danza. Uh, you know what? She, the lady. I must. I must always honor what the lady requests, and she asked me where my money was, and I, I put a lot of it in herbal life. I suppose so. I suppose she did. She did tee up that 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 ad right nicely for you. Now, uh, uh, we are coming up on the end of the show. Uh, uh, oh. I just want to say. Oh, what a tragedy! Uh, you know, oh dear. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's tragic, but it's also it happens every week. You know, I'm getting used to the trauma of the show ending, because you know I did speculate on a previous episode that maybe when the show is over, I don't exist anymore. I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's true or not. Still, um, but uh, uh, but I d have gotten used to the shock of disappearing from existence for for a week, uh, once a week. But you know what? We are going to get to the end of the show here. Before we do, we do have a question. Uh, uh, coming to me through my Instagram, my my uh, my publicist Instagram at Ezra Party, uh, from a guy named at Keith Cool. Who, yeah, I'm looking at at Keith Cool, and I'm looking at you, Tony Danza, and I'm thinking like, oh yeah, if you didn't have a name tag that said Tony Danza on, I would think you would Keith Cool. Yeah, I like get that all the time. You know, <clears throat> I you say, do you get that all the time. <laughs> you, you'd be surprised. Everybody's like, hey, is that Tony Danza or Keith Cool? A lot of I don't know who this character is, but. I don't either, but he wants to know, what do you think of coconut water? Um, <laughs> let me take this one first. The answer to what I think of coconut water is, I try not to. Uh, I, I try not to. I try not to think about coconut water. It's really hard not to because coconut water, it's so th it's so nice. It's like, it's this consistency of, of like water that's a little bit too thick and like, uh, 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 like a soda that's like not sugar hitting the back, you, the, the like sides of your t teeth and making them sticky all like that. But it's it's not practical to have a ton of co coconut water down in a, a bunker because that stuff actually doesn't stay good as long as regular water. Mm. Anyway, that's what I think. What do you think, I keep uh, 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 Tony Danza? <laughs> well, Tony Danza, this is me, Tony Danza, not Keith Cool. A lot of people get that. Right. Mix. Anyway, uh, coconut water. You know, I used to love coconut water. I would drink it. 24-7, after workouts, punching a bag, running around. Uh, <clears throat> but ever since I've been having trouble downstairs, <clears throat> coconut water's out. Can't do it. The way it goes out, it, it, it flustle, fl it, the way it, it touches my bumps down there, yeah. it's no good. 
No good. Got to get it out. I, I'm I'm so sorry to hear that that's happening to you, and also sorry that I had to hear about it. Now, <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> you did uh, nicely show for the listener. You did nicely show all your all your ad materials during that, which was which was cool. Um, uh, I'm just I'm gonna jump to uh, uh the end of the show here rather than going around and talking about uh, everybody else's opinion on coconut water, unless Greg or either of you have a real strong opinion. Um, well, I'll tell no, you. Okay. I oh, you do? To, oh, all right. Let's do it. Let's do it. What am I doing? Go ahead. Uh, what I do you think about the water, Lady Pemberley? I used to bathe. I used to take long milk baths, you know, but then I became a vegan, and so I switched to coconut water baths. And I'll tell you, it gave me pimples all over my body. So now I just dissolve pearls in vinegar, and I go with that. Oh, uh, <laughs> I've never heard of that, but if it works for you, I'm happy it does. Uh, Greg, what about you? You like coconut water? Lester, I, I, you do. Lester, I'll be honest. I fuck with coconut water almost as hard as I fuck with a single origin delightful cortado. Cheers. <laughs> that is an answer. I'm glad I uh, I asked everybody. Now, uh, at the end of the show, what we do is we have one last chance to tell anybody what you want to uh, have them check out on the internet uh, or any last words for the audience. Do make them real quick though, because we run and out of time. Uh, um, Tony Danza, let's start with you. Anything that you want folks to find on the internet? Oh, that's not Tony Danza. Well, Tony Danza. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tony Danza, let's start with you. I'm Tony Danza. Uh, I'm Tony Danza. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can check out any of my shows <clears throat> where I play a character named Tony, but when you're not doing that, <clears throat> you please check out www.glovemuseum.com. Check it out. Glove Museum? Look, look for Walgreens very soon. <clears throat> from, <clears throat> tell them Tony sent you. Oh, yeah. Just to clarify, was that Glove Museum? G L O V E? That's correct. Museum.com. Okay. It's an outdated All website. Right. Museum.com. We'll say it one more time. <laughs> uh, Lady Pemberley Butterfinger, anything that you want folks to. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, to, for Tony Danza, obviously at Keith Cool. Um, uh, Lady Pemberley, anything that you want to plug for folks or any last words of advice? Um, oh, God. I don't know how to use faces. I think that, you know, I, I have to be honest, Lester, uh, I've been watching a, a young, hot new show on YouTube called The Alexa Wise Show. So you're welcome to check out The Alexa Wise Show. It's on YouTube. But, you know, I have to say, with the whole show ending, this is really confronting me with my outrageous, outrageous sense of self-abandonment and low self-esteem. And Mm -hmm. Lester, I don't think I'm going to be able to part with you as easily as you think you might be able to. Um, I, I don't know what you mean by that. We is in no way together. I'm just saying that I left my Zeppelin parked on your lawn for a reason. Be oh, careful. you actually got, I heard something go by earlier and I thought it, I didn't know it was an actual Zeppelin landed on my yard. My ex-wife is going to kill me. I'm supposed to not have friends over down here. Um, but, uh, but you know, uh, yeah, we'll talk. Hopefully my face don't get eaten. Okay. Uh, and of course, also, if you want to find uh, when the Alexa Wise show is, you can probably follow at lex.wiz.42 to find out. Uh, now we go to Miss Elizabeth Content. Just kidding. Your name is Greg. That's so funny you said that because I'm going to make this real short and sweet. Uh, Miss Elizabeth uh -huh. Content is an account that I've been following. She is a disruptor in the comedy sphere. So you best check her out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, my beautiful wife Vanessa and I, we're going to start a podcast. It's called Bay in the Bay. Uh, mm. Next time, uh, all your Frisco tips right here. Going to say a quick San Francisco goodbye. Paris is always a good idea. Bless. Wow. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is both the worst and best thing that you have said, the uh, the Bay in the Bay area. Okay. Um, uh, for me, I, I, we are out of time. So I'm just going to say uh, – I, I'm at List of Pips on all the things. Uh, my publicist is at Ezra Party on Instagram, at Ezra Parter on Twitter. Uh, he publicizes a bunch of shows, so maybe maybe follow him, maybe follow me, do what you can. Now, we do have a show right here on the Pack Theater Network right now called uh, Play Cousins, so stick around for that. It's going to be real fun, Woo! and uh, we will see you next time. And also, so uh, now we're not on the, the Pack Theater channel anymore, but we do have to play the ending video. This is a new thing I'm doing for podcast listeners. You're just hearing me ramble while I try to click a button. Uh, 
That was there the show. Now yeah. we did it. You know how to survive an apocalypse. If anything should go down, you'll be okay. And for that, we say you're welcome. Oh, so we gotta say thanks to you to all these amazing guests. Find them on the internet, and then you'll never not know when they do it fun and stuff. And that's what the fun of the show is. Also to survive apocalypses And hey, we hit both those nails on the head with one bird or something I guess like that So anyway, I gotta sit thank you to pick the end up. <laughs>